Well, good morning, and welcome to another episode of the Academia Podcast. My name is Todd Thielen, and I am your host here at the Warp Zone Studios here in Hutchinson, Minnesota. And uh, thank you for tuning in. Uh, it's been quite an eventful day so far, and uh, here it's going to be a quite eventful day as events continue to unravel throughout the current events as we see things take shape. Um, I, I don't have much to say about it here today, um, but uh, I do have some things that I'd like to go over here as it relates to the world of education. The last two episodes that I went over. The first one on the very first day of January talked about my 365 day battle plan on what I'm going to do throughout the year of 2021. And I outlined seven different areas of our lives and just some practical goals that I have for the sakes of uh, me staying accountable to those that are listening and for the sake of um, also doing a, uh, a daily publishing challenge of coming out with some type of content every single day um, for the year of 2021. And I think that there's a good purpose behind that. Uh, when I feel that I'm coming out with some type of content, it does keep me accountable to my goals and um, it keeps me from sliding back in any areas of getting too lazy or too comfortable. Also, another challenge that I'm doing this year is a 52-book challenge, and I had just finished um, one of those er earlier this week, which was uh, the, Bo uh, the Law by Bastiat, and if you're interested in hearing about some of that review and analysis, I also have that podcast up as well. We are fully on lot uh, lots of different types of uh, podcast streams now. You can find us over at, uh, at, at the Apple Podcast Store. We're up there now. We're at Google Play. We are up at Spotify, Stitcher, TuneIn, Pandora, all the good ones. We're up and running. And you can also find the video version over at YouTube where the quality is uh, not as good. I can tend to do a little bit more freedom editing a little bit of audio on the back end. But I, I don't have the software at this type time to be doing a lot of video editing. So that's something that we're going to be looking forward as well as making some upgrades with the video, with the audio, and just doing a little bit of things every single week to see uh, where this thing takes us. I fully plan to go the whole year just for my own sake. I do have my own purposes and plans for why I'm doing this podcast. And um, I, I generally just want to help people. Um, so what we're going to be going over today, though, but before I get into it, what we're going into the contents of today, make sure that if you're watching this on YouTube, that you like the video, that you subscribe to the video, that you turn on notifications, and that you do share the video. Also, if you're listening to the podcast, make sure you do share it with a friend. Maybe share it with someone else um, specifically in the niche market here of the of parents of children that are school-aged, especially if you are liberty-loving, if you are conservative-leaning, if you are a Christian man or a woman, then I think that you will find a friend in me with the content that we'll be coming out with. Um, so make sure that you do those things, like, subscribe, share send it to a friend, leave a review. That stuff always helps um, just to get some of the growth up moving in the right direction. Um, so one thing that uh, we're going to be going over here today, I'm about halfway done with book two. You can find this book online. Uh, the audio book is at YouTube, or you can just search for it and find the PDF online if you don't want to buy it. But it is a good book that I really feel that everybody should have and everyone should at least read. The audiobook is also, it's amazing. The, the, the man that did the audiobook is just a great, um, a great storyteller, and the author is a great storyteller as well. 
But the, the name of the book is The Richest Man in Babylon by George S. Klassen. And um, the book that I did earlier this week was kind of dense. There's a lot of thick political theory in it. And I like that stuff, but it, you really need to know how to digest it and know how to represent it in a way that's that uh, is applicable to us today. And I don't find that very hard, but it is time consuming and it is uh, the, there's a lot of work involved um, to be able to to find out what was going on in the author's day and finding out exactly how he was interacting with the world regarding the state around him and his contemporary philosophers. So I don't have much else to say about that. I do have a lot more in the previous podcast. But today, I'm going to be getting into it. If you want to go and look for it, the audiobook, it's about a five-hour long audiobook. And there's about 107 pages on the PDF. Just once again, search for The Richest Man in Babylon by George Klassen. That's C-L-A-S-O-N. So we're going to be covering about half the book today and about the other half of the book on Friday. Now, getting into this, it's a little bit more difficult than just to cover the summary or to cover the, the Spark Notes version, the Reader's Digest version of this material. This book is very much an allegory, or it's a, a, a parable, if you'd like. Um, George Klassen does not have much of it. Um, of a biography out there. I mean, he basically, he was from, I think, Louisiana and went to University of Nebraska. Basically, came out with some pamphlets to try to give to insurance companies and banks to, uh, a financial advice and basically would start to write in an allegory format and parable format. Ended up coming out with The Richest Man in Babylon, which is, you know, probably a staple book. If you've never heard of it, it is a must-read um, in, the, in the area of personal finance. And the reason why we're talking about personal finance is that, uh, you know, for one, it's something that interests me. I think that every parent out there that has children needs to make sure that they're sharp in their areas of personal finance. And that uh, if you're looking to try to finance, you know, education for your children outside of the state, that's going to cost some money. Whether you're homeschooling your children, whether you're getting some consulting or resources for how to do it the correct way, textbooks, materials that all cost money, whether you're going to send them to a charter school or a private school or do online schooling, it all costs money. Um, it doesn't cost as much as the state is spending on your children for their mediocre or to even a substandard of that to the level of the education that they're getting. But uh, the reason why we're covering personal finance is that I, I personally believe that uh, um, if we manage ourselves well, we'll be able to manage our families well, manage our, our ministries well, manage our business as well. So, the richest man of Babylon. We're going to cover three different topics here today. First chapter, uh, some content, contents was the man who desired gold. Second one is the richest man in Babylon. And then the next segment is the seven cures of a lean purse. And then next week we'll be go or not next week, excuse me, Friday, we'll be going over the five laws of gold, the gold lender, the walls, and the camel trader of Babylon. So once again, it's, 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 you can't really do a drive by Reader's Digest version of this book. It is it is a very good story. I would just recommend getting it because you could share the principles, but in the way through the uh, the the rich language that he uses in this book, it's almost better off if you just read the book. If that's something that you like to do, if you learn more auditory, get the audio book, and uh, it's it's really worth your time. Um, you don't have to buy the audiobook. It is um, it is on YouTube, and uh, you know just even if you just uh, you know for the next week if you drive to work just have it on in your car. It, it's definitely worthwhile, and there's some good nuggets in this book that will get you to change your mind on on how you um, relate with money. So chapter one, getting into it, the man who desired gold. 
basically what was going on here is that uh, we're led to believe that we're being introduced to the book's protagonist, but it is not. This is kind of like a uh, an overture to the rest of the book. We come into contact with two characters, one by the name of Banseer and the other one by the name of Kabi. Now, Banseer is a chariot maker, and Kabi is a... Uh, is a not a leer a lyrist he plays the leer not the guitar the leer and basically what happens is that Banseer has a a hunger for the nice things of the world he he does he does he works hard he has a belief that if he works hard and he comes out with quality chariots um, judging by the level of his work and his dedication, that that God will bless him, and he hasn't seen the blessing take shape yet, but he still continues to believe that 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 he won't always live a meager lifestyle, that he will see the riches just by some form of divine luck or divine token um, by the amount of work that he does. And where this kind of goes south for him and his level of thinking is that Kabi, his friend, had asked for, um, I believe, shekels, two shekels, um, some type of amount of money he asked him for. And Bansir didn't even have that amount to be able to give to him. And basically, even though he, ha he has a rich taste and he's a hard worker and he, ha he has good production, he still doesn't have any money. And neither Bansir and Kabi both live around a more impoverished area of the community where they do see at times uh, the rich drive by in their fancy chariots and they can only dream of their rich and lavish lifestyle and their travels and their um, fine cuisine that they get to lavish on. Now, coming toward the end of this chapter, they come into contact with a man by the name of Arkad, which is the richest man in Babylon. And going into chapter 2, we learn more about him, that he did not always start this way. Arkad was not born into wealth. He actually started off as a scribe that would chisel into clay tablets. And he comes into contact with another rich and wealthy man by the name of Algamish. Now, Algamish was desiring that he could get some type of law carved out on st uh, clay tablets um, by the next day. He needed it done, but he did not, uh, so he gave the job to Arkad, um, the scribe, but Arkad could not get it done in one night, and uh, he promised that uh, he would be able to get it done for a discount, and um, it starts the relationship between Arkad and the wealthy Algamish. Throughout the rest of the chapter, in chapter 2, there is a great story that kind of goes along the lines of the rest of Algamish's life and how he kind of became a distant mentor for Arkad. And Arkad had tried to take some of the principles of building wealth over time, but made some very serious mistakes as he started. But then over the course of time, he began to uh, make make bigger um, steps toward progress as, as we go along. I don't want to spoil what some of those things are, but um, basically moving on to the next chapter, we see the seven cures of a lean purse. And this is kind of breaking down into a less story format and kind of shorter chapters, um, getting into the, the, the idea of, of things that you could practically do to give yourself... Um, like I said, be able to make, they say it, to make your purse fat. And so the very first thing they do, they talk about, is tithing the first 10% of your gross income actually to yourself. Now, I'm coming from a tradition where I believe that, um, from, from a Christian tradition, that I do believe that the first 10% of your gross income should go to your local church. And I do have scriptural reasons why that is. I'm not going to get into that today. I'm just talking about this book. Um, so if I were to personally follow this as a Christian man, I would have to see to it that 10% is still going to the local church and then another 
is going to some form of long-term savings account. So the reason why that is, though, is that um, is that it comes from this mindset that you have to pay yourself, and that you have to do it consistently, and that and th there's this uh, myth that well, when I get paid, that's a hundred percent mine, isn't it already? But then um, Algamish uh, questioned Arcot and said, well, no, you got to pay the you got to pay the uh, the seamstress. You got to pay the um, you know you have to pay the tanner and you have to pay the the cobbler to make your shoes. All these different types of thing of where your money is actually leaking out from. And then so he gets to the point where he says you have to pay yourself ten percent and you have to make sure that it's a steady ten percent and that you don't touch it because that money that's going to yourself literally stating is that you get to keep it. So the book does say that for every 10 coins thou places within thy purse, take out for use but nine. Thy purse will start to fatten at once, and its increasing weight will feel good in thy hand and bring satisfaction to thy soul. So the coin analogy here does tell us to save 10% of what we earn. If we do it consistently, it'll grow. It will create um, a fat purse for us. Giving the analogy here that if you do this, for 10 years that you will have well one year's worth of wages gross wages sitting in your savings account so that's the first thing that you would need to do the second one is uh, to control thy expenditures and I actually want to read this um, real quick here because I thought it was worthwhile it really kind of touched me um, just to get a new perspective here so control thy expenditures so at this part uh, in the in the book we see Arcot actually talking to a group of students as he was commissioned to teach a group of 100 students of how they could become wealthy as he was now the richest man in Babylon so Arcot says some of your members my students have asked me this how can a man keep one-tenth of all he earns in his purse when all the coins he earns are not enough for his necessary expenses. So did Arkad address his students upon the second day. Yesterday, how many of thee carried lean purses? All of us, answered the class. Yet thou do not all earn the same. Some earn much and uh, more than the others. Some have much larger families to support. Yet all purses were equally lean. Now I will tell thee an unusual truth about men and sons of men. It is this, that what each of us calls our necessary expenses will always grow to equal our income unless we protest to the contrary. Confuse not the necessary expenses with thy desires. Each of you, together with your good families, have more desires than your earnings can gratify. Therefore, are, are thy earnings spent to gratify these desires insofar as they will go? Still thou retainest many ungratified desires. So we see that no matter what the level of our income is, the larger our income goes, the larger our desires go. And that we will use every time the excess of our income to gratify those types of desires of the level of where our income is at. Arcot continues and says, All men are burdened with more desires than they can gratify. Because of my we wealth, thinkest thou I may gratify every desire? No, tis a false idea. There are limits to my time, there are limits to my strength, there are limits to the distance that I may travel, there are limits to what I may eat, there are limits to the zest with which I may enjoy. I say to you that just as weeds grow in a field wherever the farmer leaves space for the roots, even so freely do desires grow in men whenever there is a possibility of their being gratified. Thy desires are a multitude, and those that thou mayest gratify are but few. Study thoughtfully thy accustomed habits of living. Herein may be most often found certain accepted expenses that may wisely be reduced or eliminated. Let thy motto be 100% of appreciated value demanded for each coin spent. Therefore engrave upon the clay each thing for which thou desireth to spend. 
select those that are necessary and others that are possible through the expenditure of nine-tenths of thy income. Cross out the rest and consider them but a part of that great multitude of desires that must go unsatisfied and regret them not. Budget, then, thy necessary expenses. Touch not the one-tenth that is fattening thy purse. Let this be thy great desire, that it is being fulfilled. Keep working with thy budget. Keep adjusting it to help thee. Make it thy first assistant in defending thy fattening purse. Hereupon, one of the students, wearing a robe of red and gold, arose and said, I am a free man. I believe it is my right to enjoy the good things of life. Therefore do I rebel against the slavery of a budget which determines just how much I may spend and for what? I feel it would take much pleasure for my life and make me little more than a pack ass to carry a burden, that being a donkey. To him Arkad replied, Who, my friend, would determine thy budget? I would make it for myself, responded the protesting one. In that case... Were a pack ass or a donkey to budget his burden would be he would include therein jewels and rugs and heavy bars and gold. Not so. He would include hay and grain and bag of water and for the desert trail. The purpose of a budget is to help thy purse to fatten. It is to assist thee to have thy necessities and insofar as attainable thy other desires. It is to enable thee to realize thy most cherished desires by defending them from thy casual wishes. Like a bright light in a dark cave, thy budget shows up the leaks from the purse and enables thee to stop them and control thy expenditures for definite and gratifying purposes. This then is the second cure for a lean purse. Budget thy expenses that thou mayest have coins to pay for thy necessities, and pay for the enjoyments, and to gratify thy worthwhile desires without spending more than nine-tenths of thy earnings. So I would go further, though, once again, to say eight-tenths, because I do believe in a tithe to the church. And then George Classen is talking about a tithe to yourself as well. So that would be the second one, is controlling thy expenditures and having a budget, making sure that you are not just living within your means, but live far well below your means, and you will start seeing um, the ability to see your... We'll go on to the next one, to make thy gold multiply. So that would be the third one, and basically this one's kind of talking about making sure that uh, you're investing in areas that uh, you understand that you're investing in something that's not going to um, take lots of risk, but to make sure that you are using extra forms of your wealth to make sure that it's actually gaining interest, that you're putting it to work. I like that how he uses the, the language here that you're putting a thousands of little gold slaves to work, basically meaning that you gotta put your money to work. Um, that they are accruing money over time. So investing in something that's gaining interest. Um, the fourth one here would be guard thy treasure from loss. I touched on that briefly to make sure that uh, you're investing in something that doesn't have a lot of risk, that you could protect yourself um, from it sinking too far. It does say in chapter 4, Misfortune loves a shining mark. Gold in a man's purse must be guarded with firmness, else it be lost. Thus it is wise to make first secure small amounts and learn to protect them before God entrusts us with larger. So that is number four, making sure that you're guarding that treasure from loss. We got three more. Fifth one is to make of thy dwelling a profitable investment. So this one is basically talking about make sure that you have a house. Get out of renting. Make sure that uh, you're putting something toward equity. Um, the fifth cure of the lean purse is to own a home instead of renting. Money paid in rents can be used to invest and grow your own wealth. Um, it says here, to a man's heart it brings gladness to eat the figs from his own trees and the grapes of his own vines, to own his own domicile and to have it place he is proud to care of, putteth confidence in his heart and greater effort behind all his endeavors. Therefore, I do recommend that every man own the roof that sheltereth him and his. All right, so own a house. 
sixth one, sixth uh, um, cure for a lean purse is to ensure a future income. So basically, it's uh, talking here about preparing for an, uh, retirement. Um, basically, he says here, The life of every man proceedeth from his childhood to his old age. This is the path of life, and no man may deviate from it unless God calls him prematurely to the world beyond. Therefore, do as I say that it behooves a man to make preparation for a suitable income in the days to come when he's no longer young, to make preparations for his family should he be no longer with them. Uh, to comfort and support them. I know there's lots of things you could probably do in terms of that. You know, you can max out your 401k, your Roth, your IRAs, all this other types of things that you could do to ensure a uh, future income. Good news, it does look like the stock market did recover pretty well from COVID-19. Who knows what's going to happen in the next few years and how the stock market will relate to it. But uh, making sure that you do ins ensure yourself for a future income in retirement is number six cure for the lean purse. And the last one, increase thy ability to learn. So I believe this one has more to do um, with uh, your ability to learn, uh, to continue your own um, fruit for your time. Basically, this one here does say that uh, the more of wisdom that we know, the more we may earn. That man who seeks to learn more of his craft shall be richly rewarded. If he is an artisan, may he seek to learn the methods and the tools of those most skillful and in the same line. If he laboreth at the law or at healing, may he consult and exchange knowledge with those of his calling. If he be a merchant, may he continually seek better goods that can be purchased at lower prices. So basically, make sure that you are investing in yourself. Um, if you don't know what to invest in, um, make sure that you are investing in yourself, your human capital, the set of skills that are invaluable. Maybe um, it's teaching yourself through something through like Skillshare, or um, I believe it used to be lynda.com, but I believe LinkedIn bought them. I'm not sure what their name is now, but there are all sorts of different things that you can do um, to increase your human capital, to learn a skill, um, whether you know it's something in, the, in, in video production or learning how to code. There are so many different things that you can do um, to increase your skill level that's going to help you down the line to make more money. So that in a nutshell is where we're at for the first half of The Richest Man of Babylon. Once again, Friday we'll be going over the five laws of gold the gold lender, the walls, and the camel traders of Babylon. So once again, just kind of uh, making it practical, though, again, to our lives, why does personal finance matter? So, you know, it's a great question. For the podcast that I'm doing, I'm doing an academia podcast. kind of has a, a slant and a focus about homeschooling, about school choice, about uh, just staying sharp yourself in order that you may be an asset to others. Maybe it's just something you want to do is to um, just get sharp again in the areas of, of education. And maybe it's been a while since you've gone to school. But uh, basically speaking, whether you are a, um, a parent inside, uh, you know, you, you're the, the leader or the head of the household of a family, or you have your own ministry, or you're an entrepreneur, personal finance is going to matter. And it's going to affect um, what it is that you try to do in lieu of, of your children's education. And basically, if you do well with personal finance, it will help you make your dreams a reality. I don't know many people that have achieved their dreams without having finance um, figured out. Um, so, practically speaking, though, um, homeschooling is going to cost money. Private school is going to cost money. Online school is going to cost money. If you do choose to opt out of the state-sponsored education, um, basically speaking, though, if you are... In Wisconsin, um, that's probably the closest state to us that has the voucher system, you can get a voucher and get public funds to be able to pay for charter schooling, online schooling, or private schooling. And maybe I'll talk about that in the weeks to come. But Minnesota, South Dakota, Alaska, basically speaking, if you're going to ensure the level of quality for your, your own children is going to go up in terms of their education, it's going to cost a little bit of money. That means... We do need to increase the level of our income. We need to 
cut spending in some certain areas in order to make that sort of thing work because um, it might not seem like an added expense like that much but if you do have three four kids that are in high school and you are you are firm about making that that type of decision then you know it, it, it could cost you in the, the thirty forty thousand dollars a year but if you have you know just one to two children like I have you know at home here that within this upcoming year my daughter Talissa is going to be starting kindergarten and I, I firmly am going to do this in a way where I'm creating her own curriculum based on her personality based on the level intelli of intelligence that I'm already seeing emerge in her my teaching methods what I already view as entertaining because I do believe that education should also have an entertainment value to it it's really hard to learn when it's boring and um, I also have a son at home that's two years old and he's going through a lot of development right now so there's a lot of things that I need to keep my eyes out on because he's growing and learning every day so these things are very applicable for me but if you have one or two children at home that are school age that are in the elementary school and you just want to have them opt to an online school um, it might only cost a few thousand dollars a year and uh, you know breaking that down it might only be two to three hundred extra a month um, doesn't seem like that's too hard of a goal to achieve it might be hard work for some but I believe it's possible that we can do that in order to provide the best type of school for our children or maybe you just want to be an entrepreneur you want to get out of the uh, nine to five living um, working for someone else and you want to learn how to manage your own funds because uh, basically speaking if you want to learn to funds uh, manage the funds of a business you got to learn how to manage the funds of your own uh, your own personal life so basically speaking we need wealth we need to create wealth because I do believe in freedom I believe in liberty and uh, wealth creation it is freedom and you can't be free without wealth because in the end if you are the parent of a school-age child then you do understand the critical value of what's at stake here um, I know it may be a lot um, but we are at the point already of hitting um, here I oh, we had 10 downloads yesterday and I know it's not a lot you know in terms of what you see on um, in the, the podcasting world but I you know knowing that I just started this at the beginning of the year I only expect this to grow more and more the more I stay committed to bringing you the best of content the best of research and personally applying it to you as it directly relates to the education of your children and how we as parents can rightfully manage that healthy in a way where it's not producing anxiety in us or it's just another thing added to the plate but where we are at our best we're succeeding we're achieving our goals and, and, and in turn we're able to give our children the best of what uh, we want to offer them in terms of their education because there's no one else that can do it better than you um, no one's better than you to be able to um, as, as, as a parent no one's better and no one's equipped better than you I know earlier last year a lot of people woke up with the realization that you know we're could be that we're living a lie. They thought, may you know, like, I have a good job, a steady paycheck, I do have a guaranteed income. Well, I know I remember a lot of people that uh, overnight um, waking up completely helpless, knowing that their jobs might have been lost. There's uncertainty in the workplace, reduction in hours, layoffs, and that our children couldn't finish the school year. It's the first time I've ever seen that. And I talk to my grandfather, who's in his 80s, first time he's ever seen that. And now it's more important than ever, as education is taking a shift. It's just one area of our society, too. Um, but I'm doing it. I'm not going to allow my children to be subject to the whims of teachers' unions and the departments of education and the liberal teachers to indoctrinate them ad nauseum. I am not going to subject them to dueling standards of morality and with the regret of possibly losing my children to the world. 
we have a better chance. We have, we have a chance to take action while we're still ahead. Because even though I'm an optimist, I don't trust the state. I'll tell you, it, as time goes on, it's it's probably going to get worse before it gets better because it's, it's the truth. They're going to milk this thing out, not because of the fear of getting sick, but because of control, because of the Great Reset, because of Agenda 2030, the UN... It's not a conspiracy. It's happening. You have world leaders even admitting to um, being in conjecture with the Great Reset, and it's all part of the, their plan for globalism, one world government. But as a parent, there is no one better than you and that can be equipped to do something for the sake of your children's development. The best piece of advice I can give you is keep listening to this show. I promise I'll do my work to provide the best of content that's going to gear you up to either for you to homeschool your own children, to find the best online school there is, or to help you with the personal finance that you'll be able to fund your children's tuition at a private school. Because we know that Minnesota, South Dakota, Alaska, North Dakota, they don't have the option, whereas Wisconsin is in the clear. But we can literally be in the business of saving our children from the propaganda machine that is fighting tooth and nail to keep our children distracted, comfortable, and preparing them to live a life that is set to make other people rich. Um, I don't need you listening to the show simply um, enough. I need you to go out and preach the same mes message that I'm teaching you here in your neighborhood as well. Because there is a mass exodus um, from the public schooling, and... Um, we can be ahead of the curve, we can be ahead of the wheel here, and we can do something about it while we still have time. And uh, if this has been helpful to you at all, um, the things that I've been teaching, make sure you share the broadcast. Make sure that you like, you subscribe, and if anything, please leave a review. We're up on iTunes now. Make sure that you go over to iTunes, leave a good review. Uh, make sure wherever you get this uh this podcast ad. Make sure that you leave a review. I'm in the process of getting a donation link set up for some upgrades. I don't plan on putting any of that in pocket. It's just to make the show better. It's just to increase the audio quality because I know that when you do share this with people, if they don't hear top-notch audio quality, they're going to turn it off right away. And, uh, and I want to make sure that um, I as well am living in step with um, these concepts in the richest man of Babylon that um, I'm not not taking a lot of our extra funds and willingly dumping them on on a lot of electronics right now when we could be saving as well so we're gonna be setting up a donation link just to get some better equipment just so we can keep delivering the best of the best content for you because things are changing and I feel um, a burning in my bones to make sure that I'm equipping other parents as well so make sure you tune in Friday. I want to just thank you for tuning in here today. And until then, God bless and have a great day.